Greetings, welcome back to Astrologaster. Okay. Good day, Mistress Black. What brings you? Oh, Dr. Foreman, I have worked myself into such a state that I have urgent need of you. What? Oh, uh, you have, have you? Uh, well then, let me just, uh... Yay, I have urgent need of your counsel. I am certain that my husband, Blarg, is hiding a shameful secret from me. What? As you doubtless did note from my flushedness of face and heaving of bosom, I burn with the fever of suspicion and curiosity. I thought that was the booze. I fever upon your person and wish fervently that I may bring it to a speedy resolution. Let us see. What is this secret that your husband, Thomas Blarg, hides from you? Okay. It appears that Alice is to inherit wealth one day. Alice's husband serves his wife and family well through his frugal management of their affairs. The secret relates to a sudden transformation in fortune. Surely this refers to the Spanish treasure expedition Alice's husband invested in. But would it be right to reveal what I know to Alice? Alice's husband has been carelessly optimistic with the family's finances. Alice's husband's business instincts are... are what? Are misdirected? I see intelligence, authority. Yeah, verily. Alice is impressed by my authority and intelligence. <laughs> Damn. A religious romance. Now give me the B. Yep. Come on! Thank you. I fear the secret your husband hides is a sudden transformation from wealth to pauperdom, for he has been careless with your family's finances by making a series of bad business investments. Lorks and mercy! That boil-brained chump has ruined us! Probably. Oh, my virtue, I can hardly bear to think on it. Nay, nay, I cannot even... Say, is that medicinal wine I spy on the shelf behind you, good sir? Prithee, pour your patient a dose of it. Simon makes a fine figure when he reads the stars wisely. Mayhap I stay a while and take wine and a little else with him. No, don't, don't lower yourselves that much. She was a little pleased with my... Right, right, reading, goodness. Oh. Isn't she the reason of her husband's death? Good day, Dr. Foreman. It is Lady Dyer now. I remarried after poor Mr. Delamere passed. Verily? Oh, I am full sorry to hear of your husband's demise, my lady. It was the work of a witch, just as you predicted, Dr. Foreman. Yes. On the morning he died, I saw our cook Mavis mixing some manner of potion in a cauldron while uttering some evil incantation in a foreign tongue. I sent her packing back to Wales, but alas, it was too late for my poor Mr. Delamere. He collapsed and died that even. Ah, and you are sure your cook was not merely singing a Welsh folk song while stirring a pot of soup? But yes, she was very probably incanting a spell, as you say. Oh, what a ghastly business. You must have been most distressed. Yes, I was. So I hope you will understand why I worry for the health of my new husband, Lord Dyer. Mayhap tis not at all, and yet... And yet you would wish to know so that you may rest easier. Why, of course, my lady. Uh, pray, describe Lord Dyer's troubles to me, no matter how trifling they may seem to you. Well, I have noted that my husband awakens many times in the night to make water. Mayhap tis the reason why he tires so easily during the day. And he does oft complain of thirst and hunger, even after meals. They pour? Frequent urination, tiredness, dog-like appetite and thirst. Uh, 
Uh, be there anything else? There is also a small wound on his hand. It does not appear great, hmm. yet it has not healed. Oh. Even though it be some weeks since he cut himself. A wound that will not heal. Hmm. Then let us see what these stars have to say. Hmm. Be there any grave illness troubling Mr. John Delamere? Maybe it's diabetes. Lord Henry Dyer, Dr. Foreman. I beseech your pardon, my lady. What illness troubles Lord Henry Dyer? Let's see. Lord Dyer is troubled with the diabetes. Lord Dyer has been bewitched. Or Lord Dyer has a gangrene in the hand, characterized by an inflammation caused by corrupt blood. I think it's diabetes. It seems Lord Dyer suffers from the diabetes. Tis a grave case of it, I am afeard. God mend me. Then how am I to keep my husband from dying of it? Well, the consumption of lettuce seeds and barley water can help, and you must not allow him to take honey or sweetmeats. In truth, I am a little concerned about the wound on his lordship's hand, though it be minor. It is the diabetes that prevents it from healing. Oh, then what should be done about it? Take Lord Dyer to a barber surgeon, where he may have leeches applied to his wound. This will draw out the corrupt blood to hasten the healing. But prithee, be sure that your husband never cuts himself again. For the corruption of blood such cuts occasion in a sufferer of the diabetes, well, they oftentimes prove fatal. Oh, then I shall do precisely as you advise, Dr. Foreman. I thank ye heartily, sir. You're welcome. I hope it worked. Well, she was pleased with the reading. Nice. Day, Mistress Allen. I hear a child was lately born to you. I trust he is well. Yes, indeed. God has favoured us with a healthy boy. He is a true blessing to Mr. Allen and me. <coughs> and we pray he remains so. That is, that this child remains in good health. And as I do ail of something, Normally I would not have come, but methinks tis best I am treated, uh, for the sake of Marmaduke, lest he take ill from me. <coughs> I see. Then pray describe your troubles to me, Ave, Mistress Allen. Well, in truth, it is but a cough, but indeed at first I thought was naught but a chilly cold, but tis many weeks now, and it lingers still. <coughs> Forsooth I am afeard it does grow worse. Many weeks, you say? Aye, that is most concerning. Let us see what the stars have to say. What ails Mistress Avis Allen, and how may she be cured? Okay. Mistress Allen has a grave case of muttering in the breast. Mm. Mistress Allen has been... I am not picking up being bewitched, okay? I must ask a question of... Uh, Medical relevance. Who is the true father of your... God, mend me! Seriously! You would plague me with your suspicious fancies even now, in my very hour of need. Have you no thought for my son and my... <coughs> I am full sick of your jealous delusions. Oh, verily, I should never have come. I will bid ye good day now, Simon. But would you not wish to know what ails you? I indeed, I would. Which is why I will be finding myself another doctor. You're a stupid guy. She didn't take your advice most ill. She took she took you ill, okay? There's that. He's no Signor Ferraro, he's not hey, even... Signor Ferraro, how may I do you service? Hmm, how may you do me service, huh? Tis a question, is it not? 
I do hear you offer many different services, eh? not just in medicine. For you are a totore of a special kind, one who gives answers to all the problems, see? Forsooth, tis true, senor. In my practice, I endeavor to treat the whole man, mind, body, soul, the location of his missing household items, all are connected at a holistic level. I take it this time you are come about a problem that does not pertain to a bodily complaint? See. Si. These are my mama. She does a worry night and day. She say, Ricardo, you must go to the wise man who reads the stars and have him tell you what your future holds. I say, Mama, if it'll make you happy, I will go to Signor Foreman and ask him. I see. And is there any particular reason for your mother to be thus concerned? Be you faced with some kind of imminent danger? A particular reason, you say? Nay, senor, she needs no reason to worry. Mia madre is an Italian, mama. Ah, yes, of course. You see now, ah, huh? She is not like these London mamas who make the children live in a cupboard with the dog. Well, then, mayhap the stars might offer your devoted mother some comfort. Oh, what does the future hold for Ricardo Ferraro and his mother? <sighs> Can you tell him that you know the truth? Oh, come on. Ricardo Ferrer isn't being honest and soon his deception may be discovered. My relationship with Senor Ricardo is about to undergo a sudden transformation. Ricardo Ferrer is an authority figure who holds a position of responsibility at a learned institution. Yeah, that's that. A young man who is in a relationship with Senor Ferrer's mother is a hypocrite, hypocrite who, who will betray her. Ferraro will one day inherit an incredible sum from his mother. The Ferraro family is frugal. This includes Signora Ferraro, who has carefully managed her personal fortune. Go with that. I know, he's a phony. The stars reveal information of a most disturbing nature. Uh, verily? Aye. When you first came to me, you did tell me that you worked in trade. And yet my chart very plainly indicates that you are an authority figure connected with a learned institution over which you hold a position of responsibility. Indeed, it would seem that you are not who you say you are. Do you deny it, senor? Oh, Sarah! You would accuse me of calling myself something I am not? <laughs> Look at you, Sarah, a charlatan who would call himself a doctor. You are naught but a pretender. Fie, sir! It is you who are the pretender! For it is clear you are not the merchant of Venice you pretend to be. Who are you? What is your true name, sir? You will know it in time, sirrah, for we shall meet again. I bid you good day, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> Told you. Well, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't fall to the zero, but yeah, he's not. Sir, it is with much sorrow that I write to inform you of the death of my dear wife Avis these two days past. Her new doctor could not save her even though he held a medical license and was thus highly skilled. Although you were no longer my wife's doctor, I am grateful for the kindness you have shown Avis over the years and I know she was too. Indeed, she spoke of you in her final words saying, oh Simon, forgive me, Simon, or something of the like. Doubtless this expression of guilt was in reverence to a bill for your services that she had not yet settled. How like my poor wife to have been thinking of her obligations to others until her very last breath. I enclose with this missive the sum of one shilling and beg your forgiveness for the late payment. Your most assured friend, William Allen. Why? It was your fault. But why did you not let me save you, Avis? Why did you entrust your precious life to another doctor? Uh. An ignorant imposter who knows not how to read the stars to judge an illness. Really? Oh, my beloved Avis. 
Why did you die before I had the chance to? <laughs> well, I caused this tragedy by being aggressive and careless in my behavior towards Avis. God is punishing me for not having been more, a more pleasant romantic partner for Avis. Lies and rumors circulating about Avis concerning her Catholic faith and mayhap even our fair provoked anxious passions that exacerbated her illness. Avis lavished such attention and care on her child she neglected her own health. Avis' surprising decision to see a new doctor led to her death. Avis' death was the fault of a licensed doctor with a medical degree. No, it was your fault. Yes! To blame for Avis' death. If only I had not driven away with my ill-tempered, unkind accusations. Would that I had turned my thoughts to her illness and away from my own selfish needs. How will she ever... How will I ever forgive myself? You won't. Okay, but before that, what is okay? Yeah, I already received the letter from you, right? Mug, mug, okay. We need four more one, two, three, maybe. Good day, Mr. Mug. What brings you? I am exceeding ill, Doctor. Of Palmer. course you Very are. I am. And you know my wife. She is refusing to hear anything about it. Tis but another of your delusions, Nicholas, she says. She will not even look at it. Uh, look at what? Oh, I see. Uh, you may pull up your breeches now. Uh, pray let me examine you more closely. Uh, raise your chin, if you please. Now, loosen your garter and remove your stocking. I, I am afeard this verily is grave. Most grave indeed. Tis? Verily? I believe so. But we must have it confirmed by the stars. Let us consult them now. What explains these swellings that have arisen on various parts of Nicholas Mug's body? Swelling? Okay. Small oh, Mug has scrofula, a disease characterized by swellings and nodules around the lymph nodes and behind the knees. Mug has the plague, a disease characterized by swellings and balls behind the ears, under the armpits and in the groin. I don't know. Because around the lymph nodes and behind the knees. Hey, where does he? Where exactly you have the swelling? Because this make hmm, difference, you know. The lymph, lymph. Hmm. Okay, I already ha have his. He was pulling down his. Hmm. Let's say it's this one because I'm not sure. Ill with the plague, it is oft fatal, but you are in good hands. For during the great plague of '92, I was able to save many a soul from the grave with my famous strong water. A moment, if you please, while I retrieve it from my cabinet. Uh, but sir, un unhand it, sir. The, the dosage is very precise. You, you must not. Uh, nay, nay, not the whole bottle. <laughs> Ye gods, man, what have you done? Methinks. Methinks I am dying. Oh, whoa! A fatal dose! Alas, I am sorry for it, sir, but you were never meant to drink so much of it. Oh, may God forgive me. Nay, nay, do not blame yourself, Doctor. Uh, thank you heartily, for at last all shall know. My wife, my friends, how wrong they were, and how... How, and how you killed yourself. William! Oh, curse it, where is that feckless manservant of mine? William! Uh, go forth and fetch the vicar! Well, at least we have the letter from... Recommendation from him. Mr. Foreman, 
It's you. Would you deny practicing medicine, sir? Why, no, I would not deny it. My practice is well known. Indeed, since I helped cure the plague of 92 with my strong water... Then you admit you have committed this most grievous offense. Ah, well, tis true I'm not technically licensed, but I fail to see how... You fail to see? Then permit me to enlighten you, sir. A medical license assures the residents of London that a physician has the necessary education and skill to treat them. By practicing without qualification, you have not only broken the law, you have endangered the lives of your patients. Indeed, we have received reports that a man by the name of Nicholas Mugg, a wig maker of Silver Street, has lately died under your care. Aye, well, that was most lamentable, but not my fault, sir. Mr. Mug took a far greater dose of my strong water than I advised him to. He chose the dosage himself. In truth, one might say that the cause of death in this instance was, well, Nicholas Mug practicing without a medical license. <laughs> Silence, Mr. Foreman! Your impudent japery may well be suffered by your patients, but it will not be tolerated here. I do apologize, my, uh, Mr. Smith. Besides the death of this patient, we have gathered ample evidence of your malpractice, Mr. Foreman. Indeed, we have had this illegal operation of yours under observation for quite some time. Twas you, Ricardo Ferraro, the merchant from Venice. All along he was you, Richard Smith, the Queen's royal physician. Then I take it, Mr. Smith, you were unsatisfied with the medical care I gave you? Sir, we are well aware of your occult practices. What you so boldly call medical care was naught but advice conjured up by means of dark magic. You have no understanding of physic or astrology. But, but my knowledge of both physic and astrology is unparalleled. <laughs> if that is so, then doubtless you will happily submit to having your knowledge examined before this assembly. Which plant of star represents authority? Plant of star authority, Mars? No! Men are from Mars, women from Venus. Film is golden moist. Which of the crews over the private parts? <gasps> Scorpio? Silence! Simon Foreman, you have what? failed! Constable, shackle this man and take him from hence to jail. But, sir, this is most unjust. Pray afford me the chance to unhand me, you rogue. I don't really understand where I did the wrong. Sir, I am happy to inform you that I have secured your release from jail by way of my friendship with Mistress Maud Smith, wife of the president of the College of Physicians. We have contra contra contrived to have her husband believe that you enjoyed the favor of John what with gift the arch the archbishop of Gatan Canterbury and that the archbishop plans to grant you a medical license. But whilst you will be free this day, our rules will not hold for long, for Maud says that Cole 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 College intends to write to the Archbishop to warn him that you are a charlatan and to urge him not to grant you a license. Your most assured friend and current Alice Black. Okay, just to be sure Alice Black we are we need her letter. Hey, Mistress Blag. Uh, before we start, I must thank you for having used your influence to help me resolve my uh, recent difficulties. Say nothing of it. Those doctors and their college of physicians. Naught but a band of pisspot sniffing bullies, so they mm. are. Besides, I needed you out of prison so that you might read the stars for me. I of see. course. And what would you have me advise you on? What know you of Richard Bancroft? The Bishop of London. Nothing? Uh, not much, in truth. Uh, but I did attend the Easter service at St. Paul's. 
I found the bishop's sermon on the virtues of chastity and abstinence most compelling. Why, you know him well? Not very well as yet. I was seated beside him at an Episcopal dinner Saturday last. We discoursed a while. Bishop Bancroft is a most charming man. But there was a moment when we did both reach for the brandy decanter. Our eyes met and I... Well, I felt something. Ah, t'was a spark between you and the bishop? You felt a certain frisson in the air? <laughs> Nay, I felt a certain hand up my skirts, more like. His grace put his hand up your skirts. Madam, may I say how... Save your congratulations, foreman. The bishop's not in the bag yet. But hence why I am come to you. Now that I have piqued his interest, I would have the stars tell me how to secure it. Ah. Oh. Then you wish to pursue an amorous affair with Bishop Bancroft. But, but what of your husband, Dean Blagg? Oh, do not speak to me of my husband. Thomas Blagg is not fit to secure his wife's future. He is not fit for many of his marital duties, truth be told. But you did warn me of Blagg's yes. financial ruin, and for that I am grateful. Forsooth, I am glad I was able to be of service to you, Mistress Blagg. Uh, speaking of such, let us press on with this day's readings, if you please. Of course, let us consult the stars. How may Mistress Blagg secure the lasting affections of Richard Bancroft, the Bishop of London? I don't know. Alice should commit adultery with the Bishop while he is away from home. Alice should lie to the Bishop by telling him she is with child, his child. No, that's not a good idea. If Alice changes her approach and exercises constraint, good angels will aid her in her plans. Alice's chances of romantic success will be enhanced if she adopts a quiet and demure manner. The responsible thing to do would be to tell Alice some hard truths and afford her some perspective. Her reaction to this level might be unpredictable. Engaging in sin will go against Alice's Christian instincts. Alice is being careless with her husband's legacy. I don't think that's a good idea, you know? The bishop might simply get rid of her. She's careless with her husband's legacy. Okay, I might tell her to do this. Okay. We'll see that about that. You to conduct your wooing of the Bishop Bancroft with constraint and discipline. You must be strict. Allow him no intimacies. I see. Keep the Bishop's hands off me till he begs for it. Until he be driven so mad with lust he would offer anything for a tumble. That is one interpretation, certainly. It is true that Lady Anne Boleyn found success with such a stratagem in her pursuit of the late King Henry Tudor. At least, up to a point. Ay, poor lady. Be there anything else? My chart does also advise you to adopt a manner that is quiet, gentle, and demure. Verily. I will not lie. This is beginning to sound like a cod's load of work. Mayhap I play dumb with the bishop and merely nod and smile at everything he says. Dumb you work. the stratagem used by Jane Seymour, I believe. And unlike Anne Boleyn, she bagged her king without losing her head, did she not? Did she? I don't know. Yes, okay, we are getting there with her and with Thomas Black, but I think Sybil Fortescue and Robert Dever uh, Okay, I think we might go down with Robert Devereux down. Uh, yeah, he will be mad once he's back. So yeah, there's that. Okay, but that's gonna be it for today. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon.